Hello and welcome to our Discover CTY event for Johns Hopkins University faculty and staff. My name again is Trisha Schellenbach and I am the Senior Director of Family Engagement at the Johns Hopkins Center for Childhood Youth. Um, I'd also like to introduce my co-host, Dr. Amy Shelton. She's the Executive Director of CTY. Dr. Shelton holds a faculty appointment in the School of Education and has held joint appointments in the School of Medicine and Krieger School of Arts and Sciences. And she has served on the University Steering Committee for the Science of Learning Institute. She's an advocate for bright students in every community and has dedicated her research to the design and delivery of innovative educational models and approaches that support the diverse community of advanced learners. Dr. Shelton has a brief welcome for you before we begin. Uh, Dr. Shelton. Thank you, Trisha. And thank you to all of you for joining us tonight. Um, as Trisha said, I've spent about 20 years on the faculty here, first in arts and sciences, um, more recently in education. And one thing I've long valued is the educational benefits of working here at Johns Hopkins for ourselves, but also for our families. And um, we always talk about the college tuition grant and with a high school senior right now, I'm really acutely aware of that one. However, I've not always felt like I understood the full scope of the other opportunities. So Peabody courses, pre-college learning, um, credit and non-credit courses. Um, so what we were thinking as we were launching our summer 2024 programs, we really wanted to find a way to share the CTY opportunities for which you can use the tuition remission program for your children. I'm going to turn it back over to Tricia to share a little more about CTY and these opportunities. And then I hope we'll have a chance to answer some questions that you might have about who we are, what we offer, and how you and your family can take advantage of our various supports. So with that, I'm going to turn it back to Tricia. Thank you so much. All right, well, let's begin the formal presentation. So. Since the Johns Hopkins Center for Talented Youth was founded in 1979, we've worked um, with tens of thousands of bright kids from all over the world. And while no two gifted children are the same, we know they share some common characteristics. Um, we know what they need. We know that they need challenging, exciting coursework. They need acceleration and enrichment. They need engaging and supportive instructors who are skilled at working with advanced learners. They need social connections with other bright kids who love to learn. Um, and they need a place like any other student to have fun and be themselves. Um, and, and they need a sense of belonging. This is what we do at CTY. We help bright, bright kids thrive by giving them the tools, the learning experiences, um, social connections and confidence to be themselves. Um, they set high goals and they work toward accomplishing them. But what is CTY? Um, you all are affiliated with Johns Hopkins University, but in my experience, many people don't know about CTY. Um, we are a nonprofit academic center um, here at Johns Hopkins University. Um, as you know, Johns Hopkins University is America's first research university. Um, and we're continually advancing the field of gifted education through peer reviewed research, uh, published research into how advanced students learn and what they need to thrive. As part of JHU, we have access to a community of world-class ex experts in fields like engineering and medicine, bioethics, public health, and arts and sciences that we can draw on when we staff our programs, um, when we obtain grant funding, um, and take data-driven approaches to talent identification and curriculum development. Uh, some exciting examples of this cross-JHU collaboration include working with engineering colleagues to think through the use of AI in the classroom and using cutting edge machine learning techniques to assess students' cognitive abilities. CTY is truly global. Every year we serve thousands of students from around the world. Our 150,000 plus alumni include the founder of Facebook and Google, Rhodes Scholars and MacArthur Fellows, um, Nobel Prize winner, um, Adam Reese, Grammy winner, Lady Gaga, and the Pulitzer Prize winner, Ronan Farrow. So let's take a deeper dive um, into our programs, starting with our on-campus programs that mostly occur during the summer. All of our on-campus summer programs feature um, a set of a, a set of characteristics. They have um, students take one course over a three week session. 
Um, there is a caveat to that, which I'll come back to. Um, they serve students in grades two through 12. And for our on-campus sum summer programs, when we say grades uh, two through 12, what we mean is a student will have completed that grade um, as they that, that year as they move into the summer program. Um, all of our uh, on-campus summer programs are a mix of residential as well as day or commuter options. They're held at sites around the US, largely on the East Coast and the West Coast. Um, all students, for the most part, again, there's some caveats here, no absolutes, um, test and submit scores to qualify for most of our courses. There is a, a sort of standard enrollment deadline of May 3rd uh, or of this year, so May 3rd, 2024. And you might say, well, well what, why would we take these types of courses? There, there are some significant and standard benefits across all of our courses. They have small class sizes. Um, they feature an advanced and rigorous curriculum appropriate for students who are advanced learners. They, um, Features sort of a novel hands-on type of learning. So what we mean by that is that students are learning about perhaps a, um, a, a standard topic, but it's in an unusual or novel context. We have great courses that are not always offered in school. Um, in fact, most of the time they're not offered in school. Expert instructors who understand bright kids. We know that Teaching advanced subjects to students um, who are pre-college can be challenging and our instructors are skilled and trained to do just that. Um, all of our um, instructors provide detailed feedback on their coursework. They, the students by the end of the course will have a mastery of key skills and concepts. And, and we hear from many families and students that this is the the thing that they take away um, and remember most after after their time with CTY is that they build social connections and a sense of belonging. Sometimes that results in lifelong friendships. It results in an incredible alumni network, which we'll talk a little bit more about, um, but it is one of the hallmarks of the CTY experience. This summer, we have a couple of new um, exciting features. So we have a new day site. Um, and when we say day site, that is sort of a, um, a non-residential site. So students don't stay there. Um, in many cases, it draws from the local community. This one is at the Merman School in Los Angeles, California. Uh, we do have some, some residential sites that we hadn't been at for a while, but that were longtime sites that have come back onto our roster. That includes Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and Skidmore College in Saratoga Springs, New York. Um, and we have lots of additions to the course catalog, including something called the Discovery Sampler. And so on the last slide, when I mentioned um, that most of our courses feature one course over three weeks, the Discovery Sampler is a little bit different. It is um, actually three sort of mini courses featured um, one, one of those mini courses each of the three weeks. And the other interesting thing about the Discovery Sampler is that while it is truly rigorous curriculum, it is modeled after all of our courses. It is designed to let students sample um, different types of courses. So this is a great offering for students who maybe aren't set on math or they aren't set on a particular science or humanities. They wanna kind of dabble and do a little bit of everything. And so these courses do not require the exact same um, or, um, entrance criteria or um, test scores as, as many of our other courses. Um, they're interdisciplinary and they're just open to all students. Um, so uh, we're pretty excited about this brand new offering. The other thing I'll mention is that we have a risk-free refund policy, which means you can cancel anytime before March 1st and receive a full tuition refund minus the application fee. Um, and that's to help families who we know are are trying to plan their summer well in advance. So as I mentioned, we offer day and residential in-person summer options. We have a total of 10 day and residential sites this summer. Um, there are um, day programs at Gilman School here in Baltimore and 
our new site at Merman School in Los Angeles. And then we also have a site in um, New York City at the Spire Legacy School there. It looks like my, my slides on, on Gilman and John Hopkins University are not showing up the way I wanted them to, but I am going to walk you through those. So as I mentioned, we have a site at the Gilman School, and um, this is a site we've had for quite a long time. Um, it's been a, a wonderful partnership for us. We At that site, um, students from in grades two through six can choose from a wide variety of courses, including um, inventions and um, um, uh, superheroes, and we have a whole variety of courses for um, these students. And we have a, the site's going to be about 180 students over the course of two sessions. And um, this site, like all of our sites, is eligible for tuition remission. Uh, Johns Hopkins University, similarly, is uh, eligible for tuition remission, but this is an older student site. It's for students in grades seven plus. And um, we have we have a number of longtime sites, but Hopkins is, is probably the longest one that we have on our docket or one of the longest. And we consider it in so many ways to be um, a flagship site. One of the most I think distinctive things about the Johns Hopkins University site is that it really brings students from all over the world to the Johns Hopkins University campus. The students live um, and learn in our classrooms and in our residence halls. And um, they take a wide variety of rigorous courses in anything from the humanities to math to science. Do you want it? Um, talk a little bit about some of our other sites, but before I get there, I wanna mention sort of what the schedule looks like at one of these sites. And what we have is um, sort of uh, at our day sites, like any other camp, I think that your children may have attended before, there's sort of that early morning, the office opens, students go through the carpool line um, and the before care program begins, if that's an option you've chosen. The um, morning class begins at nine o'clock and they break around 1130 for lunch. Afternoon class lasts until 12, until 2.30. And after that, it's activity time. And activities could range from um, sort of an improv class to um, it, artwork to um, outside game time. And so we always do try to find locations as best we can that have a significant amount of green space because we know kids need to be outside. Um, and students head home around four o'clock. Um, there is an aftercare program available though. So popular courses for our younger students in grades two through 12, that's at our, so those are our commuter sites like Gilman, uh, include Introduction to Robotics, The Ancient World, Big Questions, um, Model United Nations and Advanced Geography, Behind the Mask, Geometry and Spatial Sense, uh, Numbers Zero to Infinity and Data and Chance, Through the Microscope, Marine Ecology. And so you can see there's a wide range of offerings here. Um, across a variety of different topical areas. At our residential sites, which I mentioned before, are typically on the East Coast and the West Coast of the United States. Um, that includes um, John Clapton's University, as I mentioned, Roger Williams University in Bristol, Rhode Island, Dickinson College, um, or Sinus College, both in Pennsylvania, Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles. Um, and then you'll notice we have some slightly different dates for two of our residential sites. And that includes UC Santa Cruz in California, as well as Gidmore College in Saratoga Springs, New York. So 
The schedule at our residential sites is somewhat similar, um, except that students are already there. So there's no drop off. It's 7.30 to 8.30 for breakfast, nine o'clock to noon students um, take class. There is a break time in there. They have lunch around noon. There's class and lab time um, from one to three. Activities take place in the afternoon until about 5.30. And again, those activities often are, to, are, are spent outside. It, it, whenever humanly possible, the students try to get outside. Um, and they can range from anything from um, really structured activities around, um, uh, again, it could be artwork, it could be um, game time outside, or it could be less structured things because we know our students need a brain break. So it could be things as simple as drawing with, drawing with chalk outside or um, hanging out with your friends on the quad and watching the clouds. Um, it can be pretty, pretty flexible and students get to choose um, the different activities that they're interested in. There is a sign up sheet um, regularly that they can, they can make their choices on. Um, after that, there's dinner, there's evening, evening class sessions. Yes, I know um, you might not think that students would be going back to class after dinner, but truly they are so engaged in the, in the courses that they've taken that this is something that they look forward to all the time. In the evening, they'll have social time, hall meetings, um, supervised downtime in their rooms. Weekends similarly are extraordinarily well supervised. The health and safety of our students is number one priority. Um, so we take supervision of our students extraordinarily seriously. There are dances, which are um, a true CTY tradition. There are talent shows, carnivals, movie nights. Um, students get to relax and hang out with their friends. There are religious uh, services available on campuses for students who, who are interested in that. And we do try to make those um, every effort for students to be able to, to do those sorts of things. Popular uh, courses for older students, again, running the gamut across different topical areas include um, data structures and algorithms, um, foundations in programming, global politics, uh, crafting the essay, fiction and poetry, possibility and game theory, uh, astrophysics, fast-paced high school, biology, chemistry, or physics, um, and investigations in engineering. I do want to pause for just a minute and mention fast-paced um, high school science courses. This is a really unique offering that CTY has. Um, we call it um, curriculum compacting, which is truly truly fast paced. It, it is very descriptive in its name. And these students are going to cover um, a, a, a year of high school science, whether that's biology, chemistry, or physics in those three weeks. Um, this These courses do require advanced eligibility. The students who take them just absolutely love them. And what happens in those classrooms is just incredibly magical. I mentioned earlier that one of the hallmarks of CTY is, yes, our, our, our rigorous courses, the unique courses that we offer, um, and the ability for students to, to learn and go deep on a subject that they're interested in. But it's also because they find their people at CTY. We hear this over and over again. Um, our students, when they think about CTY or alumni, they think about the community that they've built, the friends that they've made. Um, and we we try to find ways to, to foster these connections um, as much as possible in the time that they're with us. Um, I, I will say that our, our the, the connections that our students make um, on our campuses um, are, are unique. They do become a part of a community of advanced learners that spans the globe that results in networking um, for years and years after they leave our programs. It, it really is, I think, one of the special things about CTY. I mentioned earlier again, um, safety and peace of mind is top of mind for us. And so while your child is busy learning and having fun and making friends, um, you can know that they're in really good hands with us. 
every class is led by both an instructor and a teaching assistant. Um, and those um, instructors and teaching assistants are trained at teaching to advanced learners. Every summer site is staffed with a number of administrators from program assistants to academic counselors and deans, a site nurse and a health assistant. At all of our sites, students are supervised uh, while they're in class, while they're eating meals, participating in social activities. Residential sites also include residential assistants or RAs, sort of typical to what you might have experienced in college residence halls. Um, and there is an RA assigned to each floor of our residential dorms. And all staff undergo extensive background checks and a rigorous interview and training process before they join us. Um, tuition and financial aid, um, as well as the tuition remission benefit. Tu so tuition varies by site and it ranges from about $3,099 for a three week day program to $6,819 for a three week residential program. We do have financial aid available. It is um, limited and um, requires uh, an application, but children um, of JSU employees are eligible for 50% tuition remission on CTY courses. And we can talk a little bit more about that process in a bit, but I would encourage you to, for the details to visit our website to get the most up-to-date tuition information. I, I should also add payment plans are available um, upon request. So how do students typically gain eligibility um, for CTY courses and go through the, the um, testing process? So, We've talked through all of the great learning options available um, at CTY for in-person summer programs, but I wanna talk briefly about testing options. In addition to our programs, we also offer above grade level testing for students. Um, I mentioned how some really bright kids may be um, looking for additional challenge. Um, they may be not getting what they need in their traditional academic environment. So unlike in-grade testing, which shows how a child compares with other students in their grade, our above grade level testing is useful for families who wanna know how their child scores compared to students across several grade levels higher than their child. So scores on above grade level tests help uh, families accurately match their child with coursework that keeps them engaged and challenged and we use the scores to determine eligibility for, our, for most of our on-campus as well as our online courses. And in addition to a, the above grade level test, you can submit scores that you may have received in um, through traditional school-based testing. Those scores might be on tests like the COGAD, it might be on, be on the NWEA MAP test. There are a wide variety of um, in-grade level tests that we do accept those tests are um, accepted for standard CTY level eligibility. To achieve advanced eligibility, we do require students to take those above grade level tests. And we're gonna get into some of those details right now. So all of the testing options, and there are quite a few of them um, at CTY include the school and college ability test. This is our most popular test. It is um, available for students in grades two through 12. And th that test can be taken both at a parametric test center, um, which are found all over the country. There's um, one right here down in um, downtown Baltimore, or they can take it online at their home um, at, at a time that's convenient for them. And we have seen the online option grow in popularity, particularly over the last few years. Students can take the PSAT 8-9, as well as the SAT and the ACT. The, um, the SAT and the ACT students must register for through those, through the College Board or the ACT. But it is um, a, and has been a long time assessment that we have we've worked with. Um, we have a unique test called the spatial test battery that's available at parametric test centers. And this is a great test for students who excel particularly 
um, in in math, but are looking for something that isn't is maybe a slightly different analysis of their skills. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, students can submit existing test scores on certain tests that they may have taken in their school. Okay, so we've talked through a lot of different things, but I want to talk about how do you kind of um, start getting involved with CTY. So let, let's look at those next steps. Um, the I, I want to note that most of our courses, as I mentioned, do require test scores. The discovery sampler, which we, we talked a little bit about, about, that's that option for kind of trying um, a number of different mini courses in one session, um, one three-week session. Those do not require test scores and they're open to all students. So your first step to becoming a CTYer is to join CTY. And that, that is essentially um, account creation. So we'll, you'll create your account with CTY. Um, and once you do that, you'll either submit your test scores that you have, your existing test scores, or you'll select the option to take one of our above grade level tests. Once you get those test results back, from, um, you'll have the opportunity to register for our courses. And we would love nothing more than to invite you all to one of our, one of our courses this summer or one of our online courses at any point throughout the year. I want to briefly run through some of the resources that um, we have for families. Um, these are fully outside of our courses that our students enroll in. This, these are available to, to anyone. You do not need to be a member of CTY to have gone through the registration process. So this includes our Bright Now blog, which has content for um, parents and educators, advocates of bright young learners. Um, our CTY reading list, which has reading recommendations for all grade levels. Our parents group, our, our CTY parents Facebook group, which is um, has over 10,000 members uh, from around the world. It's extraordinarily active. It's a wonderful resource for parents looking to, to connect with other parents. Um, as well as online events, kind of like this. We have... Um, informational events about CTY regularly, but we also have events about um, topics that are of interest to, um, to parents um, and advocates of bright learners. So anything from uh, student mental health and wellness to um, college advising, we, these are extraordinarily well attended webinars and um, we also post those recordings on our YouTube channel. I'm going to um, pause there actually and sort of say, and queue it up for some questions. And I'm gonna actually stop sharing my screen so that we can do that. <laughs> 